Let's pay homage to the lineage gurus. Homage to the venerable Mang Liaoming. Homage to Master Sakya Tungkong. Homage to His Holiness the 16th Kamapa. And homage to Master Dubdan Tarshi. Let's pay homage to the three jewels of the altar. Homage to the main deity of Homa today. A transformation from Sakyamuni Buddha's alms bowl. The lotus leaf child. The wish fulfilling child. Om Bilinga Soha. Simu Dancing Katu to the city to the Kama. Dharma masters, Dharma lecturers, Dharma teachers, Dharma instructors, Dharma tutors, temple and center directors, and all disciples present here and over the internet. Good afternoon, everyone. How do you do? ちんちゃん、かまん。ちんちゃん、かまん。愛してる。愛してる。しゃらげ。しゃらげ。おらみこ。おらみこ。てけのもちょ。てけのもちょ。すごい。すごい。じば。気持ちいい。気持ちいい
Not bad. <laughs> no, there's some variation in it, right? Uh, strictly speaking, oh, if there are variation, then it wouldn't be bad. That was good. And then the one with guitar playing was actually not bad too. So Master Lin Chi just created now with AI? Actually, it has been completed before Homa and asked me to play, but I did not. But I did not play it. That was great. So for the empowerment, that's what we will play. Oh, that was really not bad. <laughs> and everybody can dance together. And just dance together. That's something that we can dance to. And jive. So actually, there are many variations to mantra chanting. I was thinking, it's very easy to improvise mantra chanting. It can uh, comply with uh, modern music as long as you know. Uh, you know, or you're in the music field, you would you can improvise, and sometimes there are miracles that uh, would move and touch your heart. Om Bilinga Soha. If the music accompaniment is good, I'm thinking there's some music that I really like. It's the song called Chengdu. It's a rather uh, melancholy, but there are also variations in the melody. such an accompaniment too. But the one just now was very exciting. Uh, and we can dance and uh, jive. But this song is rather melancholy. <laughs> oh, 
the thing that made me drop tears is not just uh, last night's dreams. The thing that I cannot let go is not just your gentleness or tenderness. In that uh, little town, I've never forgotten you. The only thing I can't take away from Chengdu is you. On the streets in Chengdu City, you and I walk until all the street lights turn off and we never stop. You hold my arms and I put my hands in my pockets and we pass by the, <laughs> the hotel and never s stop. I don't quite memorize the lyrics. But this song is really wonderful. And you can you can uh, match it with uh, Om Bilinga. And so Ha means it's uh, complete. So Ha. You can improvise it as such. Uh, my voice is not that great. And I have no lyrics, so I've forgotten. I really love the song Chengdu, which is the name of the city in China. Do you have the lyrics? Uh, show it to me. What makes me cry is not only last night's wine. What makes me lingering is not just your tenderness. How far do we have to go? You clap my hand, which makes me stun. It is such a struggling freedom. Separation is always in September, and the memory is quite melancholic. Under, under the drizzle, amidst the green weeping willows in deep autumn, I never forget you. The only thing I cannot uh, take away from the city Chengdu is you. We walk on the streets of Chengdu city, never stopping until the lights, the street lights were turned off. And you hold my arms and I put my hands into the pockets. Walking through, passing the uh, the hotel, but never entering. So, but uh, what Master Lian Zi played on the guitar uh, reminded me of a children's song. Zain, where is your friend, my friend? Where are you? Here you are. My friend is you. 
I like the train. Let's put the little stools in on a row. Little friends, please come up. Please come up. Get on board. Our train is about to leave. I'm the one who drive it. I like the singing the little bees. Let's all work. Coming in a rush, going in a rush. We are working hard. As it gets warmer and the flower blooms in spring, if you don't work, how can you live through the winter? Let's work, let's work. Don't be like the lazy bug. So I sing those to the this morning, Lu Yin, which is uh, Grandmaster's youngest granddaughter, came, so I sang to Lu Yin. So our lotus leaf child is a little child. He's a wish-fulfilling child. So like today, attending this Homa, your wishes will be fulfilled. The grand ceremony this time, the one who won the power lottery in Taiwan, lots of money, several billion, came to attend the ceremony. <coughs> the winner of that power lottery attended the ceremony. I cannot say their name because everybody knows them. Because they are on the list when I call on the names of the VIPs. And this time at the Seattle Lezang Temple's Linwood ceremony, I also call on their name. Why didn't they want to let it known? First, uh, they don't want anybody to borrow money from them. Second, their son was also there. They brought their son with them. And the son would just spend it all. So even when they won the lottery, they didn't let their son know. One time, they came for spiritual consultation, and the son was next to them. So I said, you got, and she went, I mean, they went like this. It's just one. <laughs> but Chinese homophones, like, I didn't continue. Because their sons had spent lots of their money. So they got the power lottery in Taiwan <coughs> and didn't want to let their son know. That's, so the <coughs> lottery winner uh, was real, and they really came. And we have many others who won lotteries in Australia, Malaysia, Brunei, 
Malaysia, Australia, and America. You got a uh, hundred and sixty million US dollars. Also was at the grand ceremony this time. So this wish fulfilling child will fulfill everybody's wish. So you make a wish to come attending the ceremony, becoming a primary supplicant. You make a wish. And I wish that the wish-fulfilling child will fulfill everybody's wishes. In my spiritual consultation room, I enshrine this Bengala. And at the Tripita Tantric Quarters altar, I also enshrine Pingala. And also at the South Mountain Retreat, uh, I also enshrine Pingala. <coughs> In my spiritual consultation room, there's also Pingala. At the Tripita Foundation, next to my desk or oh, there's also Pingala. As a guru, I have to fulfill my own wish. <laughs> I would like to announce now for next Sunday, October 6 at 3 p.m., there will be Marichi Homa Fire Offering Ceremony. Marichi. Marichi is our Trubuda School's great protector. And she travels in front of the sun. In the Mariji Sutra, it's mentioned, by practicing this deity, then nobody will cheat you. Nobody will harm you. And you have the greatest Dharma protector. Nobody will steal from you. This is Mariji Bodhisattva. <coughs> In my Hmong bed back, I have a Mariji. <laughs> I'm looking for it for a long time. Marichi. Marichi Dewi. Great master. <coughs> oh, uh, from Japan temple. Marichi is always with me, right? <coughs> And not just one, I have one here too. With Marichi, you would not be afraid to be mistreated by others. So practicing this Dharma is ex excellent. 
She will protect us. She's under contract with us. And the mudra. Is this? She is the Japanese samurais and ninjas protector. So all the samurais and a ninja in Japan practice uh, Marichi. Uh, there is a secret mantra to Pingala. <coughs> may the heaven respond, may the earth respond. Uh, Mother Haditi commanded uh, Pingala uh, to descend. And you chanted a uh, hundred thousand times. And Haditi mother is the mother of Pingala. So he received Sakyamuni Buddha's arms, bones. How do you pronounce it? Because the Buddha captured him and inside his arms bowl and received the blessings through the arms bowl. And there was a lotus leaf growing from the arms bowl, and he was sitting on top of the lotus leaf. And he is the wish fulfilling child. This is not a joke. Loving money and sex are not a good thing, they, but that's wrong. Actually, uh, greedy for money is that you just want to earn more money. And if you love sex, that means you're healthy. If you don't even think this way, then are you a saint? Is that a good logic? So greedy for money means you want to earn more money. So everybody is greedy for money because you want to make more money. And loving sex, if your body is no good, how can you love sex? Right? So that proves that your body is good. So you cannot say that Grandmaster loves sex. I'm 80 already. 80. That's Taiwanese um, age. Does Grandmaster love sex? I don't know. <laughs> Finally, he got married. Not only the wife is beautiful, uh, the car was bought by her mother, the villa was bought by her mother. I didn't spend anything. And then getting married all went well, and then getting into the wedding room and getting up the stairs, and I slip and woke up. Are <laughs> we talking about Vimalakirti Sutra today? <coughs> Last night. I'm telling you something truthful. 
It was a dream, but also not a dream. Last night, about 1.30, I got on the bed, and this sleep, I, I slept until 9.30 a.m. So this morning, I woke up at 9.30. And Duin came. Fo Ching Andy brought Lu Yin to my house. And she woke me up. So Lu Yin came and I was still asleep. And where had I where have I gone to last night? Guess. Can you guess correctly? <laughs> If you guess correctly, I'll give you a lollipop. <laughs> That's Pingala's lollipop. Mm. Last night, as soon as I closed my eyes, I went to the to the pure land of accumulation of fragrances. I went there and I ate fragrance meal, very fragrant rice or dish. Uh, give me a bento box and it was very tasty and I dropped several, that dropped a lot of on the ground and there were many great bodhisattvas and they said, the Buddha of accumulated fragrances have come. And I thought, oh no, I was eating the accumulated fragrance meal, very fragrant, very tasty, delicious. I ate even every grain of rice on the box and I dropped it on the ground and I felt bad. And in a bit, oh no, what what if the Buddha of accumulated fragrances saw me? So I used my sleeve uh, to sweep it and all the rice grains disappeared. And then I took a look and there were many great bodhisattvas went out to greet and welcome the Buddha of accumulated fragrances. And I thought, oh no, I'm just a nobody. And here I felt embarrassed. So with one thought, I want to merge with the cosmic space. And with that thought, I enter into the sky and disappeared. So how did I get to this uh, Buddha verse of accumulated fragrances. It's just with that one thought that tomorrow I will expound on the Vimalakirti Sutra, and that's the a chapter on the accumulated fragrances. With that thought, just with one thought, I merge with the cosmic space and arrive at the. Buddha land of accumulated fragrances and ate a, a, a bento box that they gave me. And I ate it. Oh, it was so delicious. I ate the whole thing. It's been a long time since I ate any rice. Very fragrant rice. That was real. That was truthful. I never say anything but the truth. Last night, I went to the pure land of accumulated fragrances and how I got there with one thought and with the fusion with the cosmic space. And I arrived there. And then <coughs> I saw the Buddha of cumulative fragrances arriving, and with one thought, I merged with the cosmic space and then returned to the human world. That was real. 
讲了一个笑话，就想起来。Just now, because I told that joke, so I thought of it. 有一个美女准备下海游泳。A beautiful lady was about to swim in the ocean, and there was a lifeguard that told her,、uh, "It's prohibited to swim here." And the beautiful lady was unhappy, upset, and said, "Why didn't you tell me before I took off my clothes?" And the the and and then the the guard said, "But it's not prohibited to take off clothes." You cannot、uh, swim in the ocean, but you can take off your clothes. Uh, uh, there was a, a group of soldiers that was doing a drill, a military drill, on a field, and they threw a dynamite. And and they threw it off target, and then from there. Came out a person all, all in suit and said that I was stealing a cabbage and is it, does it deserve to be hit by a dynamite? Now let's do the Q and A question from Lian Hua Jiao from Singapore. Homage to the respected、uh, Guru Buddha, I humbly beseech you to remain in the world to turn the Dharma wheel. I would like to inquire. Grand Master has mentioned that having the same vows as the Yi Dams facilitates a connection with the Yi Dam. So, if I practice Guru Yoga and make the same vow as you to share my body into dust to save sentient beings, lifetime after lifetime, would this vow of cause me to reincarnate in the six realms, life after life? And if so, is there a risk of losing my way in samsara if my foundation is not solid? Second question: Bodhisattva was generated bodhicitta with the aspiration to attain Buddhahood. However, after becoming a Buddha and fully realizing no phenomena of self, other sentient beings, and lifespan. As you, esteemed Grandmaster, have, why do they continue striving to save sentient beings? What is the underlying reason? What's what's the underlying reason?、Uh, that's my bad luck. I did not know、uh, that delivering sentient beings lifetime after lifetime. Means that、uh, I would、uh, just be cycling in the transmigration of samsara. I made the vow, but I did not know that I have to stay in samsara. But、uh, after you made the vow, you cannot, you cannot take it back. But it's done. Now it doesn't matter whether it's samsara or sukhavati or abhirati or the pure land of the accumulated fragrances. Well, it's done. But after you've done it, you're afraid that you will、uh, stay in samsara. What are you afraid of? Samsara is just a dream, an illusion. So what if you come or not? You don't. You come in. No coming and no going. So I've mentioned that having the same vows as the Yi Dams makes it easy to gain spiritual union. That's right. So shatter the body to save sentient beings lifetime after lifetime. So if I make the same vow, do I stay in samsara forever? But let me tell you. If you have attainment, just stay in samsara, because we have Buddha in samsara too. Which Buddha? Sakyamuni Buddha. So if your foundation is not solid, you will get lost in samsara. That's of course. If you have no attainment, you would be in the rebirth cycle. But if you have attainment, you're the Buddha in samsara. So what are you afraid of? 
Right? Right. <laughs> so if you have attainment, you can go anywhere. Like last night, I was in the pure land of accumulated fragrances. Second question, Bodhisattvas generate bodhicitta with the aspiration to attain Buddhahood. However, upon becoming a Buddha and fully realizing the non-phenomena of self, other sentient beings and life strength, why do they continue striving to save sentient beings? What's the real underlying reason? And the reason is because they have uh, pity and compassion towards sentient beings. Because they are compassionate towards sentient beings, right? So Master Hong Yi said, the physical eyes only see fame and benefits. Uh, the celestial eyes can see the reincarnations. Uh, Dharma eyes see the cause and effect. Wisdom eyes see a dream illusory like dreamlike and illusory. When you reach the Buddha eyes, that's compassion. Once you have attainment, then you have compassion, compassion towards the sentient beings. Their origin is in the samsara. So they are still sentient beings. So why don't you help them and save them? because they are suffering, going through both aging, sickness and death. So what's the reason? The underlying reason is compassion. Now do you understand? Lianhua Jie from Singapore. There was someone in Singapore who changed names to us, just to make up a name and ask questions that's hard to answer. Uh, you can just say any name and then ask questions, and we don't know who they are. But Li Fei knows who they are. It's uh, her brother. <coughs> so today we will talk about Chapter 10, The Buddha of Accumulated Fragrances. Just now I have talked about it. Why is it called Accumulated Fragrances? <coughs> or the Buddha of Accumulated Fragrances? Look at the kitchens. At the temples are usually called Accumulated Fragrances. Kitchens. <coughs> Buddhist kitchens are called Accumulated Fragrances Kitchens. Why are they named that way from this Vimalakirti Sutra? <coughs> Chapter 10, The Buddha of Accumulated Fragrances. At this time, Sariputra thought to himself, it's time for meals. What will this Buddhisattva eat? Vimalakirti, knowing his thoughts, said to him, the Buddha teaches the eight liberations which you, the Venerable One, practice. How can you think of food while listening to the Dharma? If you wish to eat, please wait a moment. I shall provide you with food you have never experienced before. <coughs> So this chapter starts, Sariputra thought to himself, Sariputra is one of the ten great disciples of Sakyamuni Buddha. 
he thought to himself, we are listening to Dharma and it's about noon. <coughs> there was a precept back then that they don't eat after noon, after noon. The noon has almost passed. How come there's no meals to eat? <laughs> Saliputra was thinking to himself, he wanted to eat something. And he thought, so many bodhisattvas are here, and everybody is, it's time to eat for everybody, our hearts and bodhisattvas. And the heavenly beings and the noon has almost passed and we are hungry. And after that we cannot eat. But there's no food in the room of Vimalakirti. Only him by himself. Where can he find any food? As Sariputra was thinking that, Vimalakirti knew because he had a transcendent power. So Vimalakirti knew Sariputra was thinking that the noon has almost passed, it's time to eat. So he said to Sariputra, the Buddha teaches the eight liberations, eight methods to be liberated, which you, Sariputra, should uphold, right? How can you think about eating food? Don't you know? that a spiritual cultivator should eat air. <laughs> Guru Padmasambhava said, what is the best kind of food? It's air. Air is the best kind of food. A Zen Buddhists say that the best kind of food is a Zen, a Zen bliss. When you meditate, you don't think about food. When you meditate, you feel light, light and blissful, and that lightness and bliss are your food. And Guru Padmasambhava said, the air is your food. And now, but now you still want to eat rice? What are you? How could you be... Uh, the Buddha's ten great disciples, I mean great disciples, so embarrassing. If you want to eat, wait. Vimalakiti said, I, will shall, I shall provide you with food you have never experienced before. That's what this excerpt is about. If you still want to eat, that means you're just a mundane being. So great bodhisattvas, the liberated person does, uh, does not think about eating. But if you don't eat, you'll die of hunger. But it's okay, it's fine not to eat. Air is the best kind of food. Guru Padmasambhava stated, states, in Zen Buddhism, the meditators never think about eating. In meditation, the bliss and happiness are the best kind of food. The, uh, the, bliss, uh, the meditative bliss is the food. So Vimalakirti told Sariputra, since you want to eat, okay. Vimalakirti entered Samadhi. <coughs> Through his transcendent power, he showed the great assembly. He had great transcendent power. After entering Samadhi, to let everybody see, and they all saw, a Buddha verse up above, beyond as many as 42 Ganges rivers grains of sand of Buddha verses, called 
the land of accumulated fragrances. <clears throat> so above samsara, beyond as many as 42 Ganges river grains of sand of Buddha verses, that many Buddha verses, it's impossible to count. <clears throat> Who knows how big is the universe, our universe, the scientists? Don't dare to say how big our universe is. Is there a scientist who said that how many universes there are? There was a scientist that said there are 100 suns and we only see one. How big is the world? Huge, countless, 42 Ganges rivers and grains of sand. So, of this many Ganges rivers, that many Buddha verses. There is a Buddha verse or pure land called Accumulated Fragrances. And I went there last night. And the Buddha is named Accumulated Fragrances Buddha. Who was present in the assembly. <clears throat> the fragrance of that Buddha verse surpasses all the fragrances of the heavenly and human worlds of the ten directions. Everything is fragrant there. The flowers are fragrant. The houses are fragrant. The cars are fragrant. <laughs> Uh, the gardens are fragrant everywhere, everything is fragrant. When you go to that land, all that you can smell is fragrance. The beings are also fragrant. So the beings there are all fragrant, and there are only bodhisattvas there. No arhats, no shravakas, and no prateka Buddhas. Only bodhisattvas and Buddhas are there. And their bodies are all fragrant. Heavenly beings are already fragrant. But they are the first and foremost of all fragrances. It's a Buddha verse, a pure land, called the pure land of accumulated fragrances. <coughs> the fragrance of that Buddha verse surpasses all the fragrances of the heavenly and human worlds of the ten directions. In that land, there are no Shravakas and Prateka Buddhas. Only pure great Bodhisattvas to whom the Buddha teaches the Dharma. So the Buddha of accumulated fragrances and the Bodhisattvas are together. All pagodas and structures in that realm are made of fragrance. <clears throat> they walk on fragrant ground, all gardens are fragrant. The aroma of their food permeates countless worlds in all directions. <clears throat> so all the structures are fragrant. They walk on fragrant ground. All the gardens are fragrant. The trees and the plants are all fragrant. The aroma of their food permeates countless worlds in all directions. At that time, this Buddha was dining with the Bodhisattvas, and they also eat fragrant meals. And there are many celestial princes, all named ornament of fragrance. <coughs> so the ornament of fragrant child also came from there, making offering to them. 
had all aroused the aspiration. <coughs> so the Buddhas and the Bodhisattvas was dining there, eating very, very fragrant fruit. So the celestial princes, all named ornament of fragrance, had aroused the aspiration for the mind of Anuttara Sambhati and were making offerings to that Buddha and the Bodhisattvas. <coughs> so in the Saha world, because Vimalakirti was in deep meditation, to let them see all the Buddha verses, the Buddha verse of the accumulated fragrances, to see the Buddha of accumulated fragrances and the great Bodhisattvas eating fragrant meals. I just told you, right? I ate the meal, <coughs> the rice and it dropped to the ground, and I just sweep it and disappeared. And when I noticed that the Buddha of cumulative fragrances arriving, I felt embarrassed because this little one from the samsara, I, and I was too embarrassed to meet the Buddha, so I merged with the cosmic space that disappeared and returned to samsara. That was real last night. With one thought, I entered the sky, and you can go anywhere. This is the Saha world, and yet the Dharma bodies are in Singapore, or Australia, or Europe, or any country. And they can see the Dharma bodies with one thought, one thought, by the majestic a great power of Golden Mother and all the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, with one thought you can reach wherever you think. The Dharma bodies can do that. So you say you're in the Saha world, but it's all the same, non-arising and non-ceasing. You can go anywhere. So the Saha world is also a land or a pure land. It's called the Saha pure land. Everything is the same. Anywhere is fine. Non-arising and non-ceasing. <coughs> so when Vimalakirti entered into Samadhi and through his great transcendent power manifested for the assembly to see, the great bodhisattvas, the arhats, the celestial princes to see the pure land of the accumulated fragrances, the pagodas, the gardens, everything is fragrant. And the fragrance <coughs> reach all directions, all ten directions. And the Buddha and Bodhisattva was dining and all the celestial princes, there was the ornament of fragrance who came from this pure land. And they generated the heart to make offerings to the Buddha and all the bodhisattvas. And the whole assembly saw the situation at that pure land. That was this peace. <coughs> so all the kitchens in the, at the temples would name them the kitchens of accumulated fragrances, and that came from this Vimalakirti Sutra. So they always make delicious food, like the food made at the Seattle kitchens. And the food made at the Rainbow Temple kitchens, also very delicious. Wow. 
真的是，沙沙佛世界也有佛啊，释迦牟尼佛啊。The Sahu also there are also Buddhas in the Sahu like Sakyamuni Buddha and many Bodhisattvas and many celestial beings have been reincarnated in the Sahu world and they can speak the celestial language and can dance the celestial dances and celestial uh, characters who look like the clouds in the sky. Uh, <coughs> ever changing and turning around. That's called cloud scripts. So, <coughs> a Sanskrit and many Indic uh, languages. And also Tibetan uh, scripts are called cloud scripts, just like the clouds changing. So the celestial scripts are very nice, and also celestial dances are very nice to see. And that uh, Vietnamese disciple, where are you sitting at? <coughs> Did you write that script naturally? Microphone. Homage Master. Did you write that script just like that naturally? Do you know what you're writing? Do you understand? <laughs> My sister said that sometimes she knows what she's writing, sometimes she doesn't. It disappears from inside. What time are you leaving today? We must be at the airport at seven. So you have to leave soon. <coughs> uh, no time to ask you. Only two hours. <laughs> or 7.30. Come again next time. Uh, next okay. time you can come to Seattle. Okay. I have a question for you. Mm, I have a question for you. I want to ask them. They understand the celestial language, dance the celestial dances, and I want to know to what level I want to ask them a few questions. They're very good. We have so many talented and gifted people, those who can speak celestial language, and those who can travel everywhere. <coughs> Have you been to the Pure Land and the Buddha Land? She, my sister said yesterday in her, when Grandmaster in your dream went to the Buddha Buddhas of the accumulated fragrances, she knew. My sister said last night So uh, she was the one to make offering of the food that Grandmaster ate last night at that pure land of accumulated fragrances. Uh, 师尊, 
国那边呢吃那个饭的时候呢，是他的妹妹呢，她有这个心邀请师尊过去那边吃那个饭，就邀请师尊去那边吃那个饭。哇，太好上他！哇，<笑>他邀请我去吃的。She's the one that invited me to eat that. She ordered the, the rice for Grand Master. Wow. Excellent, excellent. I ate it uh, uh, with pleasure. See? Although we are in the Saha world, actually we can go to any other world. As I remember, I passed by the place where they ate. So I took a box of meal with the fragrant rice. So I sat at the front door of that that palace hall and started to eat. But I did not pay attention who a gave the box to me. Someone gave the box, but I did not pay attention. I just passed by that dining room, the place where they eat. At that uh, pure land of accumulated fragrances, so I sat at the door, and then many great bodhisattvas uh, uh, appearing uh, to welcome the Buddha of the accumulated fragrances. Uh, so I ate at the front door and then dropped all the rice on the ground. <coughs> And the great Bodhisattva stood by next to me, and they wanted to hold me. Uh, but the fragrant rice were on the ground. So I felt embarrassed. Oh, that's I was too greedy. Even there's just a few grains of rice on the side of the box. After I finished the meal, I also ate those, and then I also dropped a f quite a lot of grain of rice, and then I s just swept them like that, and they disappeared. When I saw that the Buddha was arriving, as and the great Bodhisattvas were welcoming the Buddha of accumulated fragrances, and they were trying to uh, to to get me there too. And I felt like, oh no, no, that's that's not right. I'm not a bodhisattva here. So just with the thought, I want to return to the cosmic space, and I entered the space and disappeared. And the bodhisattva was holding my hand, and I disappeared. And I had merged with the cosmic space and returned to samsara. That's how it was. <coughs> Very clearly. Last night, I could see very clearly how many grains of rice, and there were just a few grains of rice on the side of the box, and I licked them all. It was so delicious. It's been so long since I ate some rice. So the rice of this Buddha land of cumulative fragrances is extremely delicious. We know about the jasmine of fragrant rice of Thailand. <coughs> oh, and the most delicious rice from Japan, mm, called Sinxie. Oh, I don't know. Have you been there? It's, a, it's an area in Japan. It's the most superior, the best kind of rice in Japan. Uh, it's called Sinxie. Mm. <coughs> so, <coughs> and Thai rice, Japanese rice are also tasty, but the rice at this Buddha land 
And when I woke up at 9.30 in the morning, I still feel the taste. It's, it's so delicious. It's unforgettable. <coughs> Is it Kushi <coughs> So, uh, things in the world is difficult to say. I thought uh, we have some time and can talk about it today. But <coughs> they're leaving and time is tight. Uh, the last joke. The boss said, you should treat the office as your home. And Xiaoming said, sure, it's my home. Get out of here. <coughs> All money, pay me home. All money, pay me home. <laughs>